It is finally time to wire up the M unit. After wiring up the ignition and the MOI button, that will be the final piece that ties everything together. It's basically the brains of the operations. I'm very excited to wire this up because it has taken me quite a few hours already to plan all the routing, know where I want to have the wires, where I want to have the plugs, all of that stuff, because it's one thing to have the wiring diagram, which is very important, but then when you look at the bike, it's definitely a lot different. And because of that, I want to go through it step by step and show you how I do everything, but take everything with a pinch of salt because this is also my first time wiring up a bike. So if you have any recommendations for improvements, please let me know down below in the comments. That would be highly appreciated. Let me quickly walk you through the preparation phase basically, because I would say the main thing that has helped me to understand wiring and make it a little bit more approachable is to sit down and draw up my own wiring diagram. That was such a game changer for me. In the beginning, I had no idea about anything, no idea about technical terms, no idea about how to calculate which wire size you need, nothing. I didn't know how to like connect the pieces, but sitting down and going through each of the components has helped me so much to understand how the things work together. It also showed me all of the questions that I had, all of the things that I didn't know. So if you've never wired up a bike, I would suggest you start here. Don't be intimidated by it and just go step by step, easy, easy, take your time. It will take some time. It's definitely not an overnight thing but that has helped me so much. And now we can move over to the bike. And here we have the next challenge that is in like knowing where to route which wire, how the connections have to go together. And for that, I would also suggest to practice all of the connections beforehand. I've practiced every connection that I need to make on the bike. It's like so hard to just imagine everything. You need to have at least a few things installed to see, oh, does that actually work? Or does anything get pinched? Stuff like that. So that was very, very important for me. And at this point, also double check if you have all the needed terminals and connectors and things like that, because there's nothing worse than being halfway done and then needing to wait three days until the right crib connector arrives. So double check all of that. And with that, you should be well prepared to start the wiring. So let me quickly show you the setup that I have going on and what we need to do. And then we can start making some connections. Let's start here in the front. We have the headlight, the speedo and the front brake switch. Then we move on over here. We have the ignition, which only needs a few wires to be finished. Then down here, we have the oil pressure and the neutral switch. The battery sits here, ignition lock. In the back, we have three in one indicators and the license plate light. And if we come around, we have the rear brake switch. Also the speedo sensor sits down there. So that connects right here. And then lastly, we have the horn. I want to start with the last ignition connections because they just need a few shortened wires and a few simple terminals. So that should be pretty straightforward. Now I also need to hook up the black wire that goes into the ignition output on the M unit. But what I want to do with the M unit wires is leave all of them a little bit too long until I have all of them ready and then cut one after the other to hopefully achieve a nice arch going all the way across. Next, let's deal with these three wires that go into the engine. The two come from the start output of the M unit and then the one from the regulator rectifier and they all go into the housings. All of the wires go to the starter solenoid. The one from the regulator rectifier goes to the terminal right here in the front where also the main battery lead is connected to. And then the green ones go to this little spade terminal right there. The challenge with that is that from the M unit, you need two wires to go to that terminal, but there's only one on the starter solenoid. So I got one of these little adapter pieces that makes two terminals out of one that fortunately fits on there so we can use that. Otherwise, you have to splice the two 2.5 square millimeter wires into one bigger wire and then connect the bigger wire down there. I didn't find a fitting grommet for this cutout, but this front grommet came way too long. So I might be able to actually cut this up.
So now we can move on to the next thing that is also relatively straightforward, which is the ignition lock. The one that I'm using has three terminals and I already checked which one is which during the bench test of the M unit, which is also a very good thing to do in preparation for the final wiring. And my plan for the ignition lock is to connect the two positive terminals into one lead so that both of the key positions have the same function. I'm using 1.5 square millimeter wire, black and red, and I'm just gonna leave quite a bit of slack so that I can do the final M unit terminals at the end once I know how everything looks over there. Let's move on to the next easy thing, which is the horn. We need 6.3 millimeter connectors like this. And on the horn back here on the screws, it tells you which of the terminals is 12 volts positive and which is ground. I'm also just gonna run the ground connection to this frame ground basically. And the 12 volts positive is gonna go up and then to the output side on the M unit. We're making quite good progress, so let's continue with the headlight. During the testing phase, I checked for all of the plugs how far the wires would stick into the housing. So now I can just mark where the wires touch the housing and then I add 50 millimeters for the DTM series and 60 millimeters for the DT series. And then I know exactly where I have to cut. And that's the headlight wired up. This connection right here was so satisfying. Once everything was done and the ring terminal fit nicely onto the screw, I also found an easy way to mount one of my 3D printed brackets for the Deutsche Bank connectors right here. And if you've watched the video where I made the bracket for the M unit and all of the other electronics, you know that I initially wanted to have a 3D printed bracket that sits underneath here and holds all of the Deutsche Bank connectors. Unfortunately, as I started adding things, this place here underneath the tank got very, very crowded. It would have been a super clean setup but things change and I had to relocate some of the plugs. This one now sits in the front right here. The one for the speedo sits here and the two that we're gonna do now for the rear indicators sit under the seat. I mean, look at how nice these plugs hide underneath the seat. Since the original wires only reach until here, I need to extend them a bit so they can actually reach the plug. And I also want to join the wires from the license plate light. To extend everything, I'm going to use 0.35 square millimeter wire. I do have crimp connectors to extend wires, but these are so tiny, so I think I'm going to better solder them. And the soldering actually went quite well when installing the Mo button, so it's all good. So 
that's done and while we're at it i'm also going to fabricate two little i would call them like tunnels for the wire management that are going to sit inside the little curve right here These are the wires from the license plate light and I'm going to connect those in the trim connectors. Ground goes to ground and then the positive lead connects to the rear light. There should still be enough space to run the license plate wires in the same sleeve as all of the other wires. So I'm quickly going to try that. That will make it so much cleaner. Just noticed two things first the heat shrink doesn't hold very well and then also this is slightly too big so i tried the smaller version of that and that works much better and to keep that in place securely i'm going to use heat shrink that has glue on the inside now that that's done we can start working on the second half of the plug and while we do that i already have to start thinking about the connections to the speedo because we need one signal from each of the indicators that goes there I've adjusted the plan slightly, so we have this plug that continues on the second half all the way to the M unit. But on the other side, instead of going also all the way to the M unit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across here, use this bar to secure the strand of wires. And then I'm going to merge the two strands right here. I want to use a crimp connector that looks like this and that gets rid of the soldering process because with these I can get a much more consistent result every time I use them. quick test fit and then we can add the sleeving nice that looks perfect all right we add the sleeves and then we can deal with the splices for the speedometer now we need to splice into the gray and the white and yellow one Alright, we have the back and the middle part done. So now we're going to deal with everything else that goes to the speedometer. On the rear facing side, we have the three wires coming from the speed sensor that sits right here at the bottom. Then we also have the oil pressure sensor and the neutral switch that have to run up here. And uh, the high beam needs to also go here. I think that's already it. And then from the other side, the wires only reach until here, but the plug is there, so I need to extend those as well. The speedo also needs a 12 volt power supply that comes from the AUX2 output on the M unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a red 0.5 square millimeter wire back in the same strand with all of these wires into here. And there I'm gonna make a little splice like this so that the wire then comes back out with these wires and plugs in from this side. So let me quickly show you how I do this connection. Now I'm gonna use a U-shaped crimp connector. And for that to work, I bought these crimp pliers that are for 2.5 square millimeter, four and six square millimeter wire, and just has one opening, not the double opening like you use for the ring terminals and stuff like that. And what 
I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect this wire and the positive from the speed sensor in the same trim terminal. So now after it has actually worked quite well to connect all of those wires, I'm going to do the same with the high beam wire and run one like the positive wire in here and then do the same connection basically so I can also connect it to this plug. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six out of eight. In case you're also building an airhead and you're running the old charging system then don't forget the charging light at this point that is very very important but with the vape system we eliminated that. The oil pressure sensor sits here and the neutral switch down there but it's relatively simple we only have one wire for the oil pressure sensor that is internally grounded. The neutral switch has two wires but the ground comes right back and hooks up to the engine right here so we only have two wires going to the plug. You know what I have a very very bad feeling about this crew so I'm not gonna mess with it at the moment, I need to take the engine out anyways when the frame gets powder coated, then I can deal with that. I also noticed, and that is something very unfortunate, I don't have the right crimp pliers for these 90 degree crimp connectors. So I can't do that at the moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wires anyways and leave quite a bit of slack down here, make the connections up there at the plug, and then that's that. For the Deutsch pin crimps, it's very important that you remember to adjust the pliers for the wire size that you're using. And then you get a very solid crimp, super easy to use. So I'm gonna run those two across the frame. I've extended all of them apart from these two. These two I'm not using because they're for the buttons at the back, but you can just use those. Now it's on to making the connections on the other side for the Deutsch pin connector. making progress. I hope that works out. There is a lot going on in this area. So one of the next steps is to route all of those wires up to the M unit and make the splice into the high beam wire. I think it might be smart to do one last test before I sleeve this and make all of the final connections right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wire up the two brake switches front and rear and then hook everything up temporarily, make the temporarily M unit setup so it works, use the big battery because the UltraBud is in the Netherlands being checked since it died on the first start try. So they tried to revive it and I also ordered a new starter motor to upgrade this one to make it a little bit easier on the battery and then hopefully that setup works. But I can only do the final battery connections once I have the battery back. So that needs to wait for a little bit. Now I also do have the wires that come from the handlebars and if you've watched the Moe button installation video you know that I actually wanted to also have a Deutsch pin connector right here in the front. But as I was planning all of the rest of the wiring, I noticed that these wires are actually long enough to plug directly into the M unit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is that happening? All right, let's go step by step here. Um, <laughs> I got a little bit scared in the beginning, but I suspect that it has something to do with the start button. So I detached the whole uh, Moe button, the green wire out and the ground unplugged. And what I suspect what the problem is, is that the uh, button up here actually short circuits. That is probably the screw that holds the blue wire, the start wire from the Moe button that sticks too far out and touches the handlebar. They were already closing the circuit, so it's basically as if you would hold the button all the time. So what I've done is I've tightened all of the screws on the buttons a little bit more. And I'm also gonna leave this open for now so we can actually see if that is the problem. I'm gonna hook everything back up and um, yeah, then we go again. 
All right, so let's turn the key, but be ready to disconnect the ground terminal. Nice. Okay, so that's a good sign. We have a working ignition lock in both positions and we don't have the same problem right here. So it definitely is the button. So let's run through the different functions, see if everything works and then we can deal with that issue right here. Let's start with the light. I think you have to turn it on with the M unit. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Maybe you can change that. I have to look in the settings. Nice. Okay, front, rear and license plate light. Nice. Okay, uh, high beam flash. Nice. Hold, high beam, light and hold long, turn off. Okay, nice, that's perfect. Left indicator only works in the back at the moment. Right side, nice, okay. Um, then we have horn, oh, oh. and the start button. Well, I already know that it works because it might have functioned before, but it kind of worked. Yeah, all of that works apart from the little issue right here. The speedometer is on, that is nice. I just need to check if the indicator symbol also lights up. Nice, lights up, high beam, lights up. Okay, that is perfect. And then lastly, let me quickly fake the brake switch by putting a wire into the input brake terminal. And then I'm just gonna touch one of the ground terminals with that wire and that works. Nice, okay, that's perfect. I actually also wanted to just put some silicon on these terminals to protect them from the elements. So I, I'm gonna do that and that hopefully also seals them so they don't short circuit anymore. It's quite messy. I think I'm gonna test it with one before I move on and do it to all of them and then in the end it doesn't really work. Yeah, apart from that, uh, there's not much more to do than figure out this mess. With the two brake switches wired up, we have all of the wires going to the M unit. So now I can start and shorten those and I'm also gonna add Deutsch pin crimp connectors to the ends to make this look a little bit neater. I'm joining the high beam output wire and the high beam signal wire for the speedo in the same terminal right here. And then I have that splice solved. Almost everything is done apart from the two connections right here at the bottom and the bind indicators but I want to show you how I installed those in a separate video. I'm very very happy that everything works and actually I started to enjoy wiring a lot. Uh, for me it felt like a little bit of meditation. It takes super long, everything takes ages but if you have high quality parts and tools and supplies then it actually becomes quite enjoyable as long as things work and maybe I was just fortunate with this one because apart from the starter motor and the battery not really working together in the beginning everything else worked without a problem. So yeah I might be biased but I really enjoyed the process and obviously the M unit helps a ton to make wiring quite simple and straightforward. If you have any questions let me know down below in the comments and if you have any other topics that you want me to go into a little bit more detail also drop them down below i hope this video helps you to wire up your m unit as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one